Yes, friends, and welcome once again to physics optional class. So we will learn about matrix method in geometrical optics, and the introduction of it we will start today. Okay, so it is a very useful method, and it is also a very powerful method to handle the problem of geometrical optics. And uh, with the help of this matrix method, we can find the U and V relation in lenses. we can determine the cardinal points in thick lenses uh, equivalent uh, focal length of two thin lenses also we can find okay so this is the, the things which we can find with the help of this matrix method of geometrical optics okay uh, it was formulated in 1930s by some one uh, one of the mathematician and physicist he was both basically so uh, means uh, he used to apply maths in physics actually so the physicist uh, his name is t smith and uh, when he applied this idea at that time almost for 30 years no one had appreciated his uh, works but after 30 years uh, when the computer was invented in the 1960s in the 1960s when the first of the computers came into picture those computers when uh, people started applying the knowledge of t smith on those computers then they found that uh, this analysis uh, with the help of matrices was very useful in the handling of computers while handling the, the optics problem in computer so you know this very well that uh, nowadays the thing has gone up to artificial intelligence and something like that nowadays it is going to very advanced level but uh, when computer was invented around 1960s era at that time uh, this method became very prominent before that no one even cared for this method it was not even taught in the schools at that time okay this uh, matrix method of uh, uh, optics okay so what do we do in this method it is basically we uh, we uh, represent a ray with the help of matrix we represent a re refracted or reflected ray with the help of matrix okay we apply some operations on matrices okay and all those things we do and uh, we reach the final answer without having to draw the diagram or without having to draw the lens without having to draw the uh, and our calculation also becomes easy and we don't need to draw the lens and then the ray and uh, all those geometrical considerations we need need, need not do at all uh, with the help of these uh, matrices we can solve everything okay without even looking into the physical visualization of it okay so such is the uh, importance of this matrix method so it was uh, the method uh, was reinvented and uh, after the advent of computers i told you now the basic requirements for applying the method are uh, like this that uh, just write over here okay we should write over here the basic requirements for applying the method art so basic requirements are something like this that we have to define optical coordinates of a ray optical coordinates of a ray we have to define optical coordinates of a ray we have ought to have okay we need to have some basic idea of 
मेट्राइसिस एंड वन थिंग टू बी नोट नोटेड हियर ओके दी ज्योमेट्री ऑफ दी ऑब्जेक्ट एंड दी इमेज स्पेसेस आर लिंक बाय मैपिंग ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन नाउ वॉट डज इट मीन बाय मैपिंग ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन एंड इन दिस बेसिक आइडिया ऑफ मेट्राइसिस वी नीड टू हैव ओनली द एडिशन एंड सब्ट्रैक्शन रिलेटेड आइडियाज ओके वी नीड टू हैव द आइडिया ऑफ एडिशन ऑफ मेट्राइसिस एंड मल्टीप्लीकेशन ऑफ मेट्राइसिस एडिशन एंड मल्टीप्लीकेशन ऑफ मेट्राइसिस दिस बेसिक आइडिया वी नीड टू हैव विच यू हैव ऑलरेडी लर्न इन यूर ट्वेल्थ स्टैंडर्ड ओके द जोमेट्री ऑफ द ऑब्जेक्ट इन द इमेज स्पेसेस आर लिंक्ड बाय मैपिंग ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन नाउ वॉट डज इट मीन बाय मैपिंग ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन हैव यू एवर लर्न अबाउट मैपिंग It means you used to map this uh, this f of x was there, then this element was linked to this. This is your uh, set A and set B. Then uh, through f of f of A is equal to B. Through f of A is equal to B, you link the two functions, not two functions, two sets, two sets of number A and B are related to each other by this function. Means when this function f Uh, when this function f of x is applied to any element of a we get the element of b okay so such is the situation so in a similar fashion in the place of function you will have a matrix matrix in the place of function over here you will have a matrix this figure you must have learnt in your 12th standard okay this type of figure so in the place of uh, this uh, function f of x we will have matrix with us over here in our case okay so this is the thing so they are linked by mapping transformation this is what is meant by this okay this is what's the meaning of this i hope you must have got the basic idea about it okay so let's move on towards our next point now let's get, get some clarity over uh, this thing that uh, what does it mean by the mapping transformation so uh, have a look at this that suppose this is your set a and this is your set b suppose okay this is your set b then what happens is that there is a matrix suppose your matrix is represented by p then uh, this is suppose this set a re represents your what incident ray suppose okay this set a suppose represents incident ray and suppose this set b represents your refracted ray so this is a case of case of refraction okay this is a case of refraction so this matrix p this matrix matrix p when multiplied with a will yield you b such will be the situation such type of situation will be there and this matrix p will be you are a uh, 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 mapping matrix Ma mapping matrix means it will be transformation matrix or something like that okay there are various names which we will learn in the upcoming classes but this will be basically your transform uh, the one which transforms uh, incident ray into refracted ray okay so let us write one point over here the generally accepted mapping transformation the generally 
एक्सेप्टेड मैपिंग ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन द जनरली एक्सेप्टेड मैपिंग ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन इज द कोलिनियर ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन कोलिनियर ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन विच फॉर्म्स विच फॉर्म्स द बेसिस ऑफ द मैट्रिक्स मेथड in studying geometrical optics it will become eventually more clear in the upcoming classes okay it will be more clear in future classes coordinates of a ray now let us understand what are uh, coordinates of a ray okay so put the heading coordinates of a ray or effect of translation coordinates of a ray effect of translation effect of translation so suppose we have a figure of this kind which i draw on the next page suppose you have your x axis like this and suppose this is your z axis z this is your z axis and suppose this is your x axis and uh, suppose you have one point p prime over here and another point p over here okay and uh, suppose we have parallel to this z axis we have this dotted line with us okay which is the same as z axis and suppose the distance of this point p from this p prime is suppose your x1 okay and uh, suppose this uh, this is your uh, lens okay and suppose this p and this q are joined together okay this is your q they are joined together and this is suppose your theta and suppose this is your alpha 1 okay and uh, uh, again we have one point one more point m over here and the foot of perpendicular from this m this is m okay from this m over here the foot of perpendicular this is your m prime suppose okay then what will happen then what will happen let me write over here properly just a second friends there is some disturbance over here okay just a second yes so because i am writing on tablet so handwriting might not be very good okay because i am writing on tablet once again my laptop has uh, crashed okay so this is your dotted line and this is suppose your alpha 2 angle okay and this is suppose your x2 from here till here suppose this is your x2 okay then uh, what uh, happens is that this this distance suppose you have equal to t okay this distance suppose you have equal to t up to here okay so this is your t now z uh, this, uh, now this is a convex lens convex lens is a symmetrical uh, cylindrically symmetric optical system okay cylindrically symmetric optical system what does it mean by cylindrically symmetric optical system cylindrically symmetric optical system means either a concave lens or a convex lens okay it is the that's the meaning of cylindrically symmetric optical system so z is is suppose your axis of a cylindrically
सी मेट्रिक सिलेंड्रिकली सीमेट्रिक ऑप्टिकल सिस्टम पी क्यू और पैरेक्शल रे इन होमोजीनियस मीडियम सपोज पी क्यू इज वॉट पी क्यू इज सपोज योर और पैरेक्शल रे इन अ होमोजीनियस मीडियम ओके नाउ लेट अस अंडरस्टैंड दीज टू थिंग्स Z is your axis of the cylindrical system. Okay, cylindrical optical system. So this Z is your axis, and uh, this PQ, PQ is any paraxial ray. This PQ is basically your paraxial ray. Paraxial means this angle alpha one will be very small. What does it mean by paraxial ray? Paraxial ray means the uh, the ray will be very near to the axis. Okay, paraxial ray just means that the ray will be very close to the axis. so close close to that z axis there will be a ray pq which will be paraxial so this system in itself is very small in size we are assuming we are assuming that this particular system is small in size okay so that's the thing and pq paraxial ray i told you okay so let's change the pen x1 is equal to distance X one is equal to your distance of point P from the Z axis. Z one is what distance of point P from the Z axis. So distance of point free from P from the Z axis. So this is your X one. This is This is your x1, which is distance of point P from the z axis. Okay, from z axis, x1 is your distance of point P. Got it? Okay. Alpha one angle made by PQ with z axis. Let us write. Okay. What is your alpha one? Alpha one is equal to. Angle made by PQ with z axis. Alpha one is your angle made by PQ with z axis. Let us understand this also. Let me take the pen first. Okay. This alpha one is the angle made by this PQ. With this z axis, okay. So this is your z axis. This is its parallel. So th this will be the angle made by z axis, okay. So that is the thing. Now, at at M, what is the situation at point M? Okay, at point M, what is the situation? Let us understand. X is equal to your x two, okay, and alpha is equal to your alpha two. So clearly, on the at point M, we can look at the situation, which is your point M. This is your point M. So you can look at the situation. Alpha two is the angle, and x two is the distance from the z axis. Okay, so these these are the things. This is point M. Alpha two is the angle made by this. Uh, particular line, the, the same line PQ. So alpha one will be equal to alpha two over here because the light has travelled in a straight line over here, and why it has travelled in a straight line over here? Because we have taken the same medium all over. We have taken the same medium all over. That's why alpha one is equal to alpha two as the ray is not bent. If suppose uh, uh, this part has different medium and this part has different medium, suppose then this ray PQ will not be straight. in that case this ray pq will not be straight and as soon as i say that the ray pq will not be straight in case of different mediums over here and here so they have separated by some line over here so as soon as i say that there are different mediums so the ray will bend this pq ray, ray will bend then and uh, if the pq ray bends then alpha 1 will not be equal to alpha 
but since we have taken a homogeneous medium all over on this side also and this side also and the lens uh, is kept in a homogeneous medium so any single medium and homogeneous too so alpha 1 and alpha 2 will be same in our case okay so at m x equal to x2 your uh, value of x which you which uh, for uh, for this the value of x was what for this particular point the value of x was x1 and uh, value of alpha was alpha 1 this at this particular point m the value of x will be x2 and value of alpha will be alpha 2 okay so these are the considerations you need to take care of so let's move let's move to the next point in homogeneous medium i told you just now so i will write it also over here okay i will write it also in homogeneous medium in homo homogeneous medium what will happen in homogeneous medium alpha 1 will be equal to your alpha 2 in homogeneous medium and x1 will not be equal to x2 because the heights are different let's look at the figure to understand this okay as the ray is not bent i just now i told you that as the ray is not bent it is a straight line so this line and this angle and this angle will be same this angle and this angle will be same because this is a straight line but what about this height this height will be different the, it, over here it will be x1 over here it will be x2 because these are clearly at different heights from this axis z this point p and point m point p and point m are at different heights from the axis z so that's why those two will be uh, the uh, value of x1 and x2 for them will be different okay so that's the thing so i have written in homogeneous medium alpha 1 equal to alpha 2 and uh, x1 is not equal to x2 now there is one way of defining the coordinates that you define the coordinates in terms of x and alpha so when you define the coordinates in terms of x and alpha what will happen x1 comma alpha 1 will be what optical coordinates of the ray at point p okay this x1 comma alpha 1 will be what this will be optical coordinates of the ray at p okay and similarly your x2 comma alpha 2 x2 comma alpha 2 will be the optical coordinates x2 comma alpha 2 will be optical coordinates same same to same you have to write at m optical coordinates of the ray at m so i am defining the coordinates in terms of x2 and uh, x and alpha okay so this is one way of defining the coordinates and over here we obviously have alpha 1 equal to alpha 2 because the medium outside the lens is a homogeneous one so alpha 1 is equal to your alpha 2 in this particular case okay now instead of alpha right over here instead of alpha we may take another quantity lambda okay we may take another quantity lambda as an optical coordinate just a way to represent okay as an optical coordinate for example you have two type of co coordinate system you have two type of coordinate system in your geometry uh, one is the polar coordinates and another is the cartesian coordinates so those two are basically your two different ways of representation just two different ways of representation in a similar fashion uh, over here x comma alpha is one way of representation and x comma lambda is another way of representation x comma lambda is another way of representation so let's understand this another way of representation okay so lambda will be what optical direction cosine lambda will be your optical direction
cosine lambda will be your optical direction cosine and lambda is defined as n cos theta now what is this n cos theta we will have to look into the figure for it okay we will have to, to look into figure in order to understand what is the meaning of lambda equal to n cos theta okay so let's have a look over here over here in this particular figure you can see that theta is the angle this point p makes with the x axis which is this x axis is perpendicular to your z axis and uh, your point p makes an angle theta with the x axis similarly this point m will also make an angle theta only will also make an angle theta only over here also it will be theta only okay so uh, uh, theta is equal to your 90 minus alpha okay theta will be your 90 minus alpha because this and this make 90 degree so these two angles will be complementary angles okay alpha plus theta will be your 90 degree but before uh, going into all those stuff you must understand that uh, n is the refractive index of the medium over here okay whatever medium lies over here n is the n is the refractive index of that medium okay n is the refractive index of that medium which lies over here okay and theta is the angle which uh, this point uh, this ray pq at point p makes with this x axis that is the angle theta and similarly this point m uh, over this uh, line pq will also make an angle theta only with this x axis okay be because x axis will be parallel over here like this okay so your lambda is defined as n cos theta okay so let us see over there let us see so optical direction cosine is your lambda so lambda is equal to n cos theta for point p now for point p let us write for point p for point p n is equal to n1 okay and your lambda is equal to your lambda one for point p okay and uh, for point p i showed you just now okay although we need not show the subscript n1 over here but for uh, simplicity for generalized case we can take n1 okay and uh, lambda is equal to lambda 1 suppose for point p and for point m lambda is equal to lambda 2 and n is equal to your n2 suppose for point m and for point p the subscript 1 is for point p and the subscript 2 is for point m okay so like that and uh, lambda 1 will be equal to your n1 cos theta now the point p and point m both make angle theta only so that's why we are not writing theta 1 and theta 2 over here because the lines are parallel the pq is a straight line i showed it to you many times it must be in your mind now so the pq line is a straight line so that's why the pq point uh, the pq line at point p also let us see over here okay let us see here properly the line pq at point p and point m will make an angle theta only because pq is a straight line we have same medium all over we have homogeneous medium so the pq line passes through the same medium and light travels in a straight line in a single medium if light travels in a homogeneous single medium then light travels in a straight line you must be knowing this so pq is a straight line so that's why the angle which pq makes with x axis the angle which pq makes with x axis will be theta at point p also and it will be theta at point m also at both the points it will be theta only okay so that's why we have not taken theta 1 and theta 2 otherwise we will have to take theta 1 and theta 2 too we have to take otherwise theta 1 and theta 2 also okay so so let's write over here then so therefore therefore what is the case with you lambda 1 comma x1 
वॉट इज दिस लेमडा वन कॉमा एक्स वन ऑप्टिकल कॉर्डिनेट्स ऑफ द रेड पॉइंट पी ओके दीज आर बेसिकली ऑप्टिकल कॉर्डिनेट्स ऑफ द रे एट पी दिस इज फॉर पॉइंट पी ओके एंड यू नो दिस वेरी वेल दैट अल्फा वन इज इक्वल टू योर अल्फा टू दैट्स वाई दैट्स वाई योर थीटा वन विल ऑल्सो भी इक्वल टू थीटा टू विच इज टेकन इक्वल टू थीटा ऑलरेडी एंड एक्स वन इज नॉट इक्वल टू योर एक्स टू बिकॉज हाइट्स विल बी डिफरेंट नाउ पी पी डैश एम डैश लेटेस्ट सी दिस दैट पी डैश एम डैश पी डैश एम डैश इज इक्वल टू योर टी पी डैश एम डैश इज इक्वल टू योर टी नाउ दिस कॉरस्पॉन्ड्स टू ट्रांसलेशन ऑफ द रे नाउ वी विल लुक इन द फिगर एंड वील अंडरस्टैंड दिस ट्रांसलेशन ऑफ द रे नाउ वॉट डज इट मीन पी ए पी डैश एम डैश इज इक्वल टू टी विच इज विच डिनोट्स द ट्रांसलेशन ऑफ द रे लेट अस अंडरस्टैंड द मीनिंग ऑफ दिस let us understand the meaning of this so this p dash m dash over here you can look p dash m dash okay this this particular line this particular so the, it represents the distance traveled by this ray pq distance traveled traversed by this ray pq distance traversed by this ray pq along z direction okay so from point p to m by the ray has traveled from point p to m like this so along z direction along z direction it has traveled p dash m dash okay the ray has traveled from p to m over here like this in a slanted manner in a slant manner the ray has traveled from p to m but along z axis along z axis the translation is from p dash to m dash because along z axis so how much it has traveled so along z axis it has traveled the z component of this okay the z component of pm so z component of pm is p dash m dash so it is equal to t got it so that's the thing so तो पी डैश एम डैश इज इक्वल टू टू इज इक्वल टू ट्रांसलेशन ऑफ द रे ओके सो लेट्स लुक एट फर्दर थिंग्स आफ्टर आई हैव द वाटर ओके देन वी विल लुक